What's up guys, knife review time again today. Uh, today I thought I'd change it up a little bit and we'd, uh, we'd do this review outside. Uh, given that the, the name of this knife is kind of cool, it's called the Spyderco Leaf Storm. Um, I thought I'd actually get outside and maybe show off the, uh, the beauty of my home state of Virginia. Uh, where there actually is leaves and it looks like we're about two hours away from a storm right now. As the, the wind's blowing on the treetops here, but I'll show, you, I'll show you a little bit of that in just a second. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the review. Okay, like I said, this little guy right here is the Spyderco Leaf Storm. Uh, this is kind of an oddity in the world of Spyderco. It's very unusual and uh, very different uh, from a lot of the Spyderco knives that I've seen, and definitely very different from any Spyderco knife that I own. Um, but as always, uh, before we go ahead and get into that, let's uh, jump right into the specs. Okay, blade length comes in at 2 and 7 16 inches, so I would put this in a middleweight class. Close length is three and five eighths inches, giving it an overall length of six and one sixteenth inches. Uh, the blade material, um, as I'll show in the close-ups later, you can probably see it right there, is the very awesome CPM S30V, which is just outstanding. I have never had a bad experience with S30V steel so far. It's just a phenomenal uh, folding knife steel, in my opinion. Uh, the handle material on this guy is actually a bit of a hybrid. Uh, this is the first of its kind that I own. Um, on one side, you've got a uh, titanium uh, with a Chris, uh, excuse me, Chris Reeve style integral. I can't talk today. A Chris Reeve style in integral frame lock. Um, as you can see, the frame of the knife actually turns into the locking system. And on the other side, um, you've got something that I have absolutely never seen before. Spider Code calls this natural G10. Uh, this does not feel like any G10 that I have ever had my hands on. Um, it's very smooth with a very mild uh, kind of texture to it. Um, not really grippy um, like, like other versions of G10 that I've seen. But altogether, um, I find it's, it's actually very comfortable in your hand. Um, again, not the grippiest material I've ever seen, but I really don't think that's what they were going for on this particular knife. Okay, the weight on this guy is pretty light, actually. Um, it comes in at 2.5 ounces. Um, I know that may seem a little bit hefty given that this is a smaller knife, but um, given the thickness and the dimensions of the knife, that's actually pretty light. Uh, it feels pretty light in your hand. You know, there's, there's not really a whole lot of heft to it. Uh, it's got a half inch spider hole, which I think is extra awesome um, because you don't normally see that on such a small knife. Uh, the only other small spider co I personally have seen, or I personally own rather, um, that has a half inch uh, spider hole on a knife this small is my spider co Chicago, which I love. That's one of my all time favorite spider co knives. Okay, uh, this knife was actually designed by a gentleman by the name of Kevin Wilkins. Um, who did not start out life being a knife designer. He actually kind of fell into it in the middle 90s, uh, about 1995 or so. Um, he was actually originally a graphic artist and uh, art director, and he just kind of got into designing knives as a hobby, and eventually it became his full-time job. And uh, this particular knife is based upon a custom that he built, and uh, Spyderco, I guess, uh, threw him a few bucks and decided to include it, include it rather in their product line. The, um, the lanyard hole in this guy is actually really, really uh, unique. I've never seen a lanyard hole like this. Um, the lanyard hole actually starts here and it comes out right back here. So instead of just being a hole in the back, um, like a, a conventional lanyard hole, it's, it kind of works itself into the frame, goes in one and it comes out right there, which I think is really cool. Um, one thing I really like about this natural G10 is that you can actually see the bronze washer right there. That's, that's not dirt or a stain right there, guys. That's the bronze washer behind the quote natural G10. You know, it's kind of semi-transparent G10. Um, this guy uh, is put together with torque screws, as you can see here with a pivot screw, so you can take the scale off if you'd like to clean it. Uh, pocket clip is uh, right side tip down only, and as you can see, this is kind of a funky looking pocket clip. Uh, not so much in the uh, design of it, but more so how it's, it's not really straight or flush. It kind of comes at you at an angle obviously uh, to make room for the frame lock, so it's understandable. And uh, you can take that guy off if you like. It's small enough so that if you just wanted to actually keep it in your pocket, uh, you could take the pocket clip off and do that. Personally, I'm a pocket clip type of person, so this suits me just fine the way it is. Okay, oh, by the way, the, um, the uh, blade itself is actually really thick for a knife so small. It's actually eighth of an inch thick, which as you can see right there, that's, that's a thick little guy, you know, for, for something this small. That's, that's pretty awesome. 
that it's come from uh, kind of heavy duty stock like that. Pretty good. Uh, get you a look at the jimping right here. It's um it's actually pretty uh pretty darn good jimping in my opinion. Uh, it's, they call it Ricasso style jimping. And um, as opposed to just little tiny grooves here, these are actually really thick. It looks like something um, closer to what you'd see on maybe on a fixed blade. But um, it, it does its purpose. I mean, it bites into your hand right there, and it, it doesn't move, you know, almost to the point where it almost hurts a little bit. But that's that's not really slippy at all. You know, that's a pretty good grip. It, um, it almost feels like, uh, with, with the position of the jimping here, that there almost should be like a finger choil or something right there. But, it, I mean, it's okay that it's not. I just kind of tuck my hand in like that, and... There you go, you're ready to go. Okay, deployment on this guy, uh, definitely not a flicker, um, at least not in my opinion. It's not really designed, I don't think, for flicking. You've got to put a little bit too much effort um, with your thumbnail in there. It's more of a smooth opener, in my opinion, um, which, you know, a lot of Spydercos are. You know, and th there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it just kind of glides open with very little effort, just nice and smooth. Uh, lock up there actually is a little bit of blade play side to side none up and down that I can detect It's a very very small amount guys, so it's definitely um, You know not not a huge hit on the knife as far as I'm concerned so not too bad um, There is one minor hit that I would have to give on the frame lock itself. There's nothing wrong with the locking system itself I mean, it's a Chris Reeve integral frame lock, you know that speaks for itself You know it, it locks up really good every time snaps into place with authority, you know, that's audible and that's good stuff. Um, I guess it's more of a design thing and maybe just with my particular hands, but it would, I think it would be an even larger problem for somebody with larger hands is that when you close it, your, your hands tend to kind of push against each other simply because the knife is so small. And I'll show you what I mean right here. Watch where my fingers right here go naturally when I try and close this with my thumb. See how this finger right here is pushing that way and my thumb is trying to push that way. So it, it feels like it feels kind of funky when you're trying to cl close the uh, lock because you're it's like your your fingers are doing like the opposing force kind of thing. It's it's not a big deal. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, at first, the um, the titanium frame lock was really stiff, which I've heard about a lot of titanium frame locks. And then you just kind of carry them, use them, open, close them, play with them, and they loosen up a little bit. And this little guy has loosened up. It does stick occasionally from time to time, but overall, it's pretty cool. All right, guys, sorry about the wind if that picks up on camera, but let me go ahead and show you the carry view here. As you can see, the carry's decently low. Um, that's that's pretty cool. You know, the, like I said, the pocket clip is kind of funky. You know, it's kind of uh, kind of off kilter there, but um, the, the carry on it is actually really smooth. You know, in and out of your pocket, just not a lot of trouble. And it's pretty grippy. It's not going to fly out of there or anything like that. you got to give it a decent tug to get it out there and deploy it. And it just slides right back in there. Nice and slim, my opinion. Plus, check this out. Rides in your fifth pocket. It's so small. Good stuff. One more shot there. Nice and low. Awesome job, Spider Cub. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. Okay, we'll start off with a similar size knife, the Kershaw Scallion. Just about the same uh, length closed. Let's check out the open length there, if I can get Mr. Kershaw stowing, scouting to stay put. And just about the same open length. That's pretty close. So I'd put those in the same uh, size category there. Okay. Benchmade Mini Griptilian. As you can see, Mini Grip Tone's a little bit bigger. Definitely got a longer blade, handles a little bit longer. And finally, let's bring in another Spyderco. The very awesome Spyderco Persistence. So you can see that's significantly larger, not too much larger, but definitely in a bigger class of knife in both um, overall size and blade length. There it is next to the Blackberry Tour. Alright, let's give you some close-ups here. A little front row seat action. There we go. Spyderco CPMS30V. Got a little spider logo there. 
see if I can show you these uh, natural, there we go, these natural G10 scales. You can see little, little itty bitty dots there. You can see the bronze washer right there inside the handle, it's pretty cool. There's the lanyard hole. Let's take a look at that titanium side. Nice shiny pocket clip on there with the Spyderco logo. It's that titanium Chris Reeve style integral lock. Very cool. Let's check out the blade centering. Uh, blade centering is a little bit off to the right, um, which is a small hit I'd have to give on the knife since this is a premium price knife. Uh, this is you know north of a hundred bucks, guys. Um, even when you can find a good deal on it, that's uh, something I think they could have corrected. Again, not a big deal. It doesn't it doesn't drag on the frame or anything like that. Um, it's just you'd normally expect a little bit more from Spyderco and from a knife in that particular price range. That big old Spyderco hole. Check out that jimping there. Serious jimping. Very seriously cool small knife. Pretty cool little guy. You can see it does fit in my hand. I don't have big hands, guys. All right, let's go ahead and do a cut test. Let's see how this S30V steel does. Ooh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Absolutely effortless. I have, wow. That is just so smooth. Look at that. I've had this for quite a while, guys. Um, if you looked at my LA unboxing video, LA uh, police gear unboxing video, I had this knife back then. I've carried it several times since then. Oop, little cod there. Oop, let's put a little water on the paper. There we go. Oop, paper doesn't want to cooperate. Look at that. That is freaking impressive, man. Especially after all this time. Look at that. Just absolute chop suey on the paper. Excellent job, Spyderco. So, in conclusion, guys, Spyderco Leaf Storm. Um, definitely the most unique Spyderco knife that I personally own or have held. Um, it's been a real uh, pleasure carrying this little guy. Um, as is, um, I do like Spyderco's smaller knives. You know, I love the Cat. I love the Chicago. You know, I, I love uh, the way that they uh, they put attention into the little things and their smaller knives. You know, what they call little big knives. Um, this is a very big little knife, in my opinion. Um, CPM S30 S30V blade steel. You can't go wrong with that. Again, I've never once been disappointed with that blade steel. It is just absolutely awesome, and it's my personal favorite. Um, a folding knife blade steel. It's just, it's great stuff. Um, haven't had to sharpen this guy yet. You know, I've had it for a couple months and it's still going strong. Um, I like the the clear kind of uh, natural G10, as they call it, as Spyderco calls it. It's really cool. Again, not really grippy, but I don't think that that was the intention with this. You know, this I don't call this a hard use knife, um, which brings me to a term that I'm going to introduce um, in some of my videos. Ba two basic classifications that I'm going to uh, classify um, all folding knives with. Uh, first will be called a BUF, Basic Utility Folder or Buff. And the second will be called an HUF, Hard Use Folder. Um, this I would definitely call a BUF, Basic Utility Folder. Um, as it's not meant for hard use, it's just meant for basic everyday tasks for the everyman. You're not going to you know, take this guy outside and beat it up. It's good enough as it is. So overall, I can give this one a Mr. Jimbo Fox recommendation. Again, this is a premium knife, so if you've got the bucks to pay up for it and you're a really big spider coat collector, this is one that should be in your collection. I'd like to go ahead and thank everyone so much for their time. I appreciate everyone watching, all the new comments, subscribers, man, you guys rock. And as always, stay fit, stay strong, stay supreme. Take care, guys.